بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Respected elders, your brothers and sisters, dear guests, my young friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. When I first went to school, and this was here in Canada, when I first went to kindergarten, I knew only five words of English. My mom had taught me those five words so that I could go to the bathroom and I could tell someone if I missed my bus. So those five words were, I miss the bus and washroom. So those were exactly the five words that I knew when I first went to kindergarten, my first day of school ever. Even though I couldn't really communicate at first, alhamdulillah, I had a, uh, a very pleasant and positive experience in kindergarten. And back then, kindergarten was only one, one year. But in grade one, and of course, by then, I was able to communicate, alhamdulillah, my English uh, had improved considerably, but of course, I was still learning. I came across a bully. And I remember being very afraid of him at first. But then, I don't know what happened. I don't recall. But I eventually remember getting along with him pretty well. And no, I didn't become like him. I didn't behave in the way that he was behaving. But overall, we had a pretty um, relatively functional and okay uh, relationship. Perhaps I was kind to him. So as a result, he wouldn't do anything to me. But it's been a while, so I don't remember exactly what had happened, but I remember how it turned out. Since then, Awareness and research about bullying has grown considerably. But unfortunately, the reality is that bullying is rampant around the world and including here in Canada. According to the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, 38% of adult males and 30% of adult females reported having experienced occasional or frequent bullying during their school years. 47%, so almost half of all Canadian parents, report having a child victim of bullying. And it's not just about children. 40% of Canadian workers experience bullying on a weekly basis. Research also shows that children who are victims of bullying are more likely to experience mental health issues which can continue into adulthood. So it's not something that they just experience when they're children and then just sort of get over it or forget about it, but actually it's something that could continue to affect them into adulthood. They're more likely to have health complaints and also more likely to have decreased academic achievement. Those who engage in bullying, right? so that was about the victims of bullying, those who engage in bullying are more likely to abuse drugs in adolescence and as adults, more likely to engage in violent and criminal behavior and be abusive towards spouses or their children as adults. Even children who witness bullying as bystanders, okay, so they're not the ones who are engaged in bullying, they are not the victims, the direct victims of bullying, but they are just bystanders they are also more likely to experience harmful effects, such as increased use of tobacco or other drugs, increased mental health problems, and missing and skipping school. Adult bullying can also have severe negative effects on adults, impacting their self-esteem, their self-worth, their confidence, their ability to work productively and could lead to stress and anxiety. So what is this bullying that we are talking about? And we hear this term a lot, right? We hear about bullying 
anti-bullying initiatives, I'm talking about it now, but what are we actually talking about? So if you try to look up the definition of bullying, there, there are multiple definitions as you know, a lot of other issues. But what we could bring it down to is that it is hurtful behavior. Behavior that is hurtful, that is repetitive, and that is intentional. Behavior that is hurtful, that is repetitive, that is intentional by an individual or a group towards another. This could include, include you know, physical acts of aggression, right? From, you know, getting beat up regularly, repeatedly, or being uh, otherwise, you know, physically uh, assaulted or harmed, name calling, right? mocking, intimidation, controlling. And then there are some that are more prevalent in, in, in amongst girls. Silent treatment, right? rumors, social alienation, and ostracism. Right? It's not exclusive to girls, but it's found more amongst girls. And then there's cyberbullying, which didn't, which didn't exist when I was in grade one. But cyberbullying includes sending or posting or sharing negative and harmful, false, or mean content about someone else. It can also include sharing of personal or private information about another person, causing embarrassment or humiliation. And this is why we always tell our youth, always be very careful, and it applies to adults as well, always be very careful about who you share your private information with. Always be very careful about who you tell secrets to. You may think that an image or a video or just a detail about yourself is something that you can share because you trust another person, a friend, for example, a close friend. But it's very possible that at some point, that friend may, not, may no longer be a friend, may betray you as a friend, and may end up sharing that picture, that video, or that detail in ways that can be harmful to you, that can be embarrassing to you, that can be humiliating for you. So to protect yourself from that, don't share such pictures and videos and such details. Be very careful. Even if you think that it's not going to be saved, it will be deleted within seconds, it's always possible to take a screenshot. It's always possible to use another device to take a picture or a video. It's also easy to manipulate videos and pictures to make it look like you did something which you haven't done or that you were somewhere where you weren't. So always be very careful about how you share material and who you share it with. Nobody will say that they want to be bullied. And the reality is that oftentimes bullies pick on our children because they are different. So it could be your name, the way your name is pronounced or the way it's spelled. It could be your skin color. Perhaps it's your accent. Perhaps it's your religion or how you look in terms of your physical body. It's important to note though that the problem is not with the one who is being bullied because you see Victims of bullying will try to find reasons why they are bullied, to try to understand. And they might think that, oh, it's because I'm of a different color or of a different religion. Oh, it's because of my name. Or it's because of the way that I look. Because of how skinny. Or because of how overweight I am. Or how short I am. But the reality is that's not the reason. The reason is in the person who is engaging in, in this type of behavior. So changing oneself to please a bully usually doesn't solve the problem. They'll just find something else to pick on. Because the problem is in them and not in you. And a lot of times, because victims of, of bullying are so pressured, or are under so much stress and anxiety, they will try to find ways to fit in. Right. 
in the way of how they dress or you know what their name is or you know who they hang out with what their skin color is like you know trying to bleach themselves like all these types of different things that people go through victims of bullying go through because they want to conform and they feel that if they are able to fit in then this type of you know behavior towards them will stop and a lot of times it doesn't right because the problem is within those who are engaged in bullying recently i was very disturbed to learn that we may have bullies sitting here right now we may have children and youth adults who are engaged in bullying who engage themselves in this type of behavior and they are maybe sitting here right now some of the youth my young friends as i call you who i see at strive and meet elsewhere are reportedly involved in bullying others including some of the children and youth who are here with us today this is our problem this is not someone else's issue or someone else's problem in some cases they bully they engage in bullying when they are with a group often at school away from my eyes and the eyes of parents but when they meet the victim one on one perhaps at a dinner party perhaps at the masjid then they're perfectly fine it's as if nothing happened so when i learned about this it really left me perplexed like how could this be possible that a person is engaged in bullying in one circumstance in one scenario and then when they meet that their victim or the victim of their aggression of their of, of their behavior in another setting it's they're, they're perfectly okay so i did some research and i found that those who engage in bullying are often times victims themselves who perhaps suffered through bullying at some point themselves it doesn't make it right it doesn't justify the behavior but it helps us understand a little bit sometimes they are lacking attention coming from broken homes and families in crisis or perhaps they were abused and they feel a lack of control so they try to make up for that by controlling others or perhaps they themselves are afraid of being bullied perhaps you bully others because you're afraid that if you don't then you will become the victim so therefore you need to hang out with the right crowd and you need to do things to prove yourself so that you can protect yourself from being bullied whatever the reasons my brothers and sisters and my young friends i still call you my young friends even if you are engaged in bullying know that bullying is wrong there's no justification for it and especially for a muslim you see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us very clearly surah al-hujurat surah number 49 ayah number 11 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu allah addresses you and me all of us ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu oh you who have believed لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى ان يكونوا خيرا منهم let not a people a group of people ridicule another people don't ridicule one another allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says عسى ان يكونوا خيرا منهم perhaps they may be better than them It's, per, it's possible that the person you're mocking you're making fun of you're bullying perhaps in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that person is actually better than you and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does something very interesting where he specifically addresses women as well separately right the wisdom in that perhaps something to reflect upon not to say that women are are more engaged in this type of behavior or engage more in this type of behavior but perhaps there is something there for us to reflect upon in the other types of ways that mockery can occur apart from that which is commonly known so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wala nisa'u min nisa' asa an yakunna khayran minhun nor let women ridicule other women perhaps they may be better than them 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on. Wala talmizu anfusakum. Do not defame one another. Wala tanabazu bil alqab. Nor call one another by offensive nicknames. This is clearly explicitly addressed in the Quran. Do not use offensive nicknames for one another. And an offensive nickname is not what you consider to be offensive, rather it's what the person you're calling or using that name for what they consider to be offensive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بِئْسَ الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ How evil is it, or it is, to act rebelliously after having faith. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ And whoever does not repent, it is they who are the true wrongdoers. The moon, the oppressors. Right? Now you think about this. This entire verse is not about physical aggression. There is no mention of anything physical here. It's about mockery. It's about making fun of others, ridiculing others, using offensive nicknames for others, defaming one another. Right? All verbal. Right? Or, or non-physical, right? It doesn't have to be verbal, it could be through actions as well. But, non-physical, meaning it's, we're not talking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not addressing, you know, beating someone up, or violence towards another person. This is all about non-physical aggression. Yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whoever does not repent, they are from the oppressors. That means it is possible to be an oppressor without using your hands, without using your feet to hurt another person. It's possible that you're an oppressor, that you're from the Lali Moon, simply because of how you use your tongue and how you behave towards others. And to be from one of the from the Lali Moon, this is something which is very serious. This is something which is extremely serious for the believer. And in fact, this type of environment where there are groups of people who think that they're strong, that they are the ones who are smart, hmm? they are the ones who look good, they're beautiful and they're handsome, right? and they look cool. And that because of all of this, they can bully others who are perceived to be weaker, who they think are weaker, who are not as smart. And it's not true, but they perceive that, they think that. And they can make them feel unsafe. This type of environment reminds us of the days of ignorance, the days of Jahiliyyah and pre-Islamic Arabia, right? Where the people who were considered to be weak, considered to be outcasts, considered to be on the lower, lower levels of society, were oppressed. And if they sought help, nobody would come and help them. Right? Do you really want to be a person who is reigniting the spirit of jahiliyyah? Is that, is that really who we want to be? And it's not just for the children and the youth, this applies to adults as well. Right? My brothers and sisters, Islam came to rectify this type of behavior. To give respect and dignity to every single person. To outlaw all types of harmful behavior, whether it's through actions, through you know, whether it's physical, or whether it's verbal or of any other type, to teach respect, so that no one is mocked, or made fun of, or ostracized. So ask yourself. It's a moment of reflection for all of us. It doesn't matter who you are, old or young, male or female. Let's ask ourselves. Do you bother or mock or harass another person repeatedly, regularly? Maybe you have your reasons for that. Perhaps you justify it for whatever messed up reason. Okay? But are you engaged in that type of behavior? And if so, ask yourself, why do you do that? Why do you actually do that? Do you think that you're better than them? Is that what it is? You feel superior? Do you want to please your, your friends or impress others? 
Or perhaps, do you have your own insecurities? Are you doing it because you yourself feel insecure in some way? This could be happening in school. You could be doing this in school if you're a student. Or perhaps you're doing this in your workplace. Mm -hmm. Within your family, your social circle. Even in Islamic organizations. We're not immune to this type of behavior. I'm not singling anyone out. But this happens in the broader Muslim community. Remember that you will be accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each word and action. And one day will come, one day will come when your victim will have the upper hand over you. And this will be on the most important day of your existence. Forget about your life. The most crucial and important day of your existence, with this, which is the day of judgment. If your victim does not forgive you then, you will have to pay. And it may even lead to you becoming bankrupt. One is the bankruptcy of this dunya in this world, where a person doesn't have any more money to pay for their liabilities, to pay their bills. And then they declare bankruptcy. And your credit you know, gets trashed, and then you know, you, your credit rating goes down the drain, and then you, you have to build up again. Right? That's this worldly bankruptcy. Then there is the bankruptcy of the hereafter, the bankruptcy on the Day of Judgment which is far more severe, far more dangerous. And that is a person who shows up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has wronged others. And there's a long lineup of people who are there to claim their rights because that is the day of judgment, it's the day of rights for every single person who was wronged in this life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts dishing out your good deeds, all the things you thought you did, right? Because you were doing good, all of those start being dished out to those who, you were, who were your victims, who you had wronged in this life. And then there will be a person in that situation who will run out of their good deeds. There will be no more left. Because everything has been given away to his or her victims. And then, what's going to happen? Are those people going to be turned away because, they had nothing, because there's nothing left now? The store's closed, the company's bankrupt, there's nothing left for you? You're one of those you know, lower level creditors who, didn't deserve, who don't deserve much? No, that's not the case on the Day of Judgment. When you run out of good deeds, then you start taking upon yourself the sins of your victims. It starts going the other way now. So a person who thought they showed up with a bunch of good deeds, and that they would be okay, but they had wronged others, they may find themselves bankrupt. And then the judgment takes place takes place. Then their, their, their deeds are weighed. After they, had, they have run out of their good deeds and they have accumulated the sins of others. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decide where you end up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So take heed now and please change your behavior now before it's too late. If you have been a victim yourself, recognize that you need help. Talk to someone who you trust, a counselor, an imam, a parent, tell them your issue and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protects you from oppression. And we have a responsibility to help victims of bullying and those who engage in bullying. Especially if you are a bystander. Bystanders are present in 90% of cases of bullying. 90%! And can often stop the bullying within 10 seconds if they intervene. Within 10 seconds, you have the power in most cases to stop an incident of bullying if you step forward and you take action. The Prophet wasallam said, Support your brother whether he is an oppressor or is being oppressed. So it was said that, Ya Rasulullah, we help the one who is being oppressed. Obviously, we understand that. But how do we help an oppressor? So the Prophet ﷺ said, by seizing his hand, how do you help an oppressor? By going along with them and, and continuing their oppression? No. You help an oppressor by holding them back from their oppression. So be on the lookout for bullying and stand up for those who are being bullied, if it is possible for you to do so. Some of it can be very discreet and hidden. Right? If you are being bullied, keep a record. 
right? Perhaps write down each instance and share it with your allies, with friends and people who you trust and who care. Perhaps others were also being bullied. Band together. And don't respond with aggression. And depending on the situation, you either ignore or you assert yourself and you report and you seek help. And parents, realize that you may have a child who is in this room right now, perhaps, who is engaged in bullying. Sometimes children will have split personalities. Right? They're one way at school with their friends and they're completely different with you and in front of me, in front of us. So be open to the possibility that your child is a bully or is bullying others if you hear about it from others. And especially if they lack empathy or if they're showing aggressive behavior or if you find, themselves, find them to be very competitive. And possibly ask other children and adults who know your child. Ask them how they are and seek help if you suspect that your child is engaging in Bully. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially protect our children from all forms of oppression and bullying. May Allah azza wa jal rectify those who are engaged in this type of behavior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our schools and our society a place of safety and respect for all. Ameen wa akhudawan.